If you run a business or you're self-employed, then you may be impacted by upcoming changes to the way your tax bill is calculated. The changes that I'm looking at today are known as basis period reform. And over the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to be explaining exactly what these changes mean for you. Before we jump into it today, don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more tax content. Now, currently, a business will usually pay tax on any profits that it makes during its accounting period. Just note at this point that the accounting period is different from the tax year, which runs from the 6th of April through to the 5th of April the following year. The accounting period is chosen by the business. Typically, it's going to be a 12-month period and it could end at any point during the tax year. For those of you who have completed your own tax returns in the past, this is why you'll see this question asking when your accounting period ends, when you're completing the self-assessment pages of your tax return. It's because when it comes to profits from self-employment, and that includes partnerships, it's not the profits for the tax year that currently go on the return. It's profits for the accounting period that ends within that tax year. This is known as the current year basis. Let's go through an example. So if I'm self-employed and I have an accounting period that ends on the 31st of October 22, then that would cover the period from the 1st of November 21 through to the 31st of October 2022. Any profits that I make during that period would need to be reported on my 22-23 tax return because the 31st of October 2022 falls within the 22-23 tax year. So you can see that when it comes to the self-employed profits being reported on the 22-23 tax return, I won't actually pay tax on the profits that I made between the 6th of April 22 and the 5th of April 23. I'll actually be paying tax on the profits that I made between the 1st of November 2021 and the 31st of October 2022. That's under the existing rules. And and this is set to change under basis period reform. The aim of this reform are to ensure that a business is paying tax on profits that are generated within the tax year, the 6th of April in one year through to the 5th of April in the following year. This will ensure that everyone is paying tax on the same basis period rather than everyone choosing their own. This new way of reporting is known as the tax year basis. These changes are required in order to roll out MTD, or Making Tax Digital, for income tax, which will see the annual self-assessment tax return replaced with quarterly submissions. We won't go through these changes in any detail today, but just know this rollout of MTD is scheduled from the 6th of April 2026, and in order to make it work, HMRC need everyone's basis periods to be aligned first, which is why these changes that I talk about today will have to be fully implemented by the 24-25 tax year. Now, in reality, this leaves you with two options. The first is to align your accounting period with the tax year. So in my example, where I had been using the 31st of October as my accounting year end, I would need to change this to align with the tax year. In the eyes of HMRC, this could be done by selecting any of the dates on screen as your accounting year end. And of course, if you're already using one of these dates as your accounting year end, then you won't need to make any changes. The second is a little bit more complicated because technically there is actually no obligation to adjust your accounting period and in certain situations it won't actually be possible. To get around this, you would need to time a portion profits from the two accounting periods that fall within a tax year. So again, if I produce accounts to the 31st of October each year, then when it comes to the 24-25 tax year, I would calculate my taxable profits by taking 7 twelfths of my profits from the accounting period that ends 31st of October 24, and then 5 twelfths of my profits from the accounting period ending 31st of October 2025. 
The problem with this is that because the 24-25 tax return would be due by the end of January 26, that's only going to leave me with three months to prepare and finalize my accounts. And somebody with an accounting period that ends in January or February simply wouldn't have those figures available. In that situation, you would be forced to submit provisional figures or estimates in order to meet the deadline and then circle back to adjust once the accounts are finalised. So you can see that depending on when your accounting period falls, this can put you under additional time pressure and even create more work. So assuming that your accounting period doesn't currently align with the tax year and you're happy to leave it this way, here's what you'll need to know. The 2324 tax year is going to be a transitional year. You'll use this to adjust your taxable profits and align them to the new tax year basis. This will involve the following steps. Step 1. Calculate your profits in the usual way for the 12-month accounting period that ends within the tax year. So in my case, I would have 12 months of taxable profit covering the period the 1st of November 22 through to the 31st of October 23. Step two is to then calculate taxable profits for the transitional period, which will cover the period from the end of the accounting period to the end of the tax year. In my case, this would be from the 1st of November 23 to the 5th of April 24. Although just remember, any of the dates from the 31st of March to the 5th of April would also be acceptable. Step three is to calculate any unused overlap relief. Now, overlap relief usually occurs in the opening years of self-employment when you have an accounting period that doesn't align with the tax year. There are also other situations where it may occur, but for the most part, it's going to be from when you started trading, which could be a long time ago, and therefore cause problems determining if any or how much overlap relief is available. In this case, you may be able to reach out to HMRC, who have indicated that they will try to help in these situations. Step four is to then deduct any overlap relief from the profits of the transitional period, that were calculated in step two. Just note, it's important to deduct this from transitional period profits and not the profits from your last full accounting period. This is due to spreading rules, which I'll cover shortly. And step five, add the two together. So you've got your accounting period profits plus transition profits less overlap relief. And that's going to give you your total taxable profits for the 23-24 tax year. Of course, depending on whether any overlap relief is available, this could leave you with a significantly higher tax bill than usual, as you're going to be paying tax on profits for a period of more than 12 months. To account for this, HMRC have introduced spreading rules. As a result of these rules, any remaining profit from the transitional period after any overlap relief has been deducted will be automatically spread across five tax years starting in 23-24, with 20% being taxed in each year at the rates of tax and national insurance that apply at the time. It is possible to make an election to HMRC to have those profits taxed in an earlier tax year, maybe if you just want to get it out the way, or if you think tax rates may be more favourable now than they will be in the future years. But there is no option to delay any of the five instalments. Another point to consider is that it won't always be the case that you actually make a profit in either the 12-month accounting period that falls in the 23-24 tax year, or the transitional period, which are both going to get reported on the 23-24 tax return. And where you do make a loss, it's important to know how to account for it and how it might impact your tax liability. Essentially, there are three different scenarios. Number one, you make a loss in the 12-month accounting period and a profit in the transitional period, which still results in an overall profit. In this case, the loss from the accounting period and any overlap relief is deducted from the profit of the transitional period. The spreading rules are then applied to any remaining profit. 
Number two is that you make a profit in the 12 month accounting period and a loss in the transitional period, which still results in an overall profit. In this case, the loss from the transitional period and any overlap relief will be deducted from the profit of the 12 month accounting period. Any remaining profit is then taxable in the 23 24 tax year, and the spreading rules cannot apply. And finally, number three, you make an overall loss, in which case spreading rules wouldn't apply anyway, but you may want to seek additional tax advice in this situation as there may be additional reliefs available. One thing that individuals may also be concerned about is how reporting increased income in the 23-24 tax year will impact their thresholds and allowances. After all, crossing tax thresholds and losing entitlement to certain allowances could increase the individual's tax liability through no fault of their own. Again, HMRC have planned for this scenario by implementing two parts to the tax calculation. One that will include the profit from the 12-month accounting period that ends within the 23-24 tax year, which would be in line with how tax is calculated in a normal year. And then a second part of the calculation is then reserved for profits from the transitional period, less any overlap relief. Keeping these profits separate in the tax calculation makes it possible to ensure the individual doesn't receive any unwanted consequences as a result of reporting profits from the longer than 12 month period. For example, the high income child benefit tax charge, which may apply to individuals with adjusted net income exceeding £50,000. In this case, HMRC will only consider income from the first part of the calculation to ensure that the individual is treated in line with previous years. Similar considerations have been made for tax-free childcare, marriage allowance, tax credits, and pension contributions. That is all for today. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching. See you next time.